Last time we took a look at the CRF suspension, we determined the sag, determined the spring rate, and discovered that the front forks don't have the right springs in them. So today, we're gonna put the right ones in. While I remove the forks, let me catch you up. Last time we measured our sag the Racetech way and then compared it to Racetech's spring calculator. I'll link that video in the corner. After we measured the sag, I confirmed that the rear was fine, but the front was too stiff. So I bought these. Surprise, surprise, they're from Racetech. Okay, let me, as the editor a few weeks later, set the record straight, just interject for just a second because I used the wrong term the entire video, at least a dozen times by my account. And so I just wanna set the record straight, right up front, so you don't make comments. It is damping, not dampening. To clarify, this is damping, and this is dampening. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to me saying that thing I said. These are 0.43 kilogram per millimeter front fork springs. Stock is 0.51 kilograms per millimeter, so I'm gonna be losing 0.08 kilograms per millimeter in the front, but that will gain me much more usability in the fork travel. Before we go tearing into this, let's take a look at the forks right here on the bench to get a better idea of what we're working with and what we have to start. First thing I will note, and I wish I had shown some video or taken a picture at least before I clean these up, but you could tell on this portion of the fork right here that basically from about here down was super dusty and the dust seal had not touched it at all. So that was more evidence to support the fact that the springs in these forks are way too stiff for me because the dust seals were only going to about here, which means I wasn't using my full travel. Once we put in the new springs, we should be able to see after some riding and after some time that the dust seals will be able to travel a lot further down and give me much more of the usable suspension. Also while cleaning, I wanted to inspect the dust seals here to make sure that there was no oil on the outside of the fork at all and that there was no signs of damage basically on the fork seal. I do have new ones just in case and I don't think I need to replace them honestly because they look really good. They're actually really clean and I don't see any evidence of oil seeping out from these and onto this portion of the suspension. So before we go tearing into this, I wanna go over some of the specialty tools and items that you're gonna need to make this job happen or at least make it that much easier. I'll also note that this procedure is not specific to the 450L or 450L. RL. This will actually go pretty much the same way for pretty much any Showa fork, any 250 or 450 from Honda's range, and I think Kawasaki, if I remember correctly, there's another manufacturer that uses Showa forks too. So the process is the same for those. First specialty tool is this from Motion Pro. This is a fork wrench and it has a very wide 50 millimeter opening. So this is the size of the nut at the top of the fork that we need to crack loose. So this will help very nicely. Not only that, but this is also for two other things. So it also says 14 millimeter, you can see right here. That refers to this groove right here, which will be very helpful in holding the dampening rod, which you'll see later on. Also at the very end here is another fork wrench for the top that's for the dampening assembly, I think. And this one, I don't know if we'll actually need to go tearing into this, but I'll at least show it to you a little bit later on. So this is a very useful tool if you're gonna be doing the forks yourself. You can do it with an adjustable wrench and a piece of metal or other little bits and bobs, but honestly, three tools in one, this is actually really good. I'll link this in the description below. Then of course, there's the fork oil. Obviously, if you're gonna be dropping the fork oil in the suspension, you need new oil to replace it. And this is Honda Genuine SS19 oil. This is exactly the type of oil that Honda recommends. There's different types of Honda Pro fork oil, so be careful and make note that this is the one for 450RLs. And it's funny, after I say all of that, there's actually two different ways you can replace the springs in your forks. There's one that requires new oil and there's one that's considered the track side replacement, which actually retains the oil in the forks and you don't have to do the replacement. There is some trade-offs with that and I'll go over that a little bit later on, but for this purpose, I wanna do it how Honda recommends, which is pulling apart the dampening rod and replacing your fork oil. So now that we have them off of the bike, the first step is gonna be breaking that nut on the top loose with our Motion Pro fork tool and we will be draining out the oil and letting it sit overnight. 
So that's pretty much all we're gonna do for now, but I will see you in the next clip. Hey, look at that, we're at the next clip. A lot's happened since then, so let me get you caught up. So we let the oil completely drain overnight. Then I put the forks in a clamp so that I could get the bottom nut where the rebound is cracked loose. Once it was fully loose, then I temporarily put the top cap back on so that I can compress the entire fork assembly to expose the bottom dampening rod. With that dampening rod exposed, I was able to lock it in with the Motion Pro tool so that I can gain access to the lock nut behind it. With a wrench on that lock nut, I was able to remove the bottom bolt entirely and the dampening rod inside. With all that done, I can undo the top cap again and remove the entire dampening assembly from within inside and the spring. So I mentioned earlier that there's actually two methods with these show forks to swap springs. What I'm doing is generally considered the traditional method, the Honda recommended method, it's in their service manual, but there's also what's considered the trackside method. So with this method, basically what you're doing is you're removing all the internal pieces from this external piece, including the spring. However, with the trackside method, what you're doing in essence is pulling these two external pieces apart, and then within the gold piece right here, you're maintaining all of the dampening rod, the oil, everything, and you can pull out the spring from there. So with this alternative method, you are maintaining your fork oil, but there is a catch. When you have to pull these two apart, you have to break the seals here, and on this inner portion, there's a lot of inside seals on this tube that have to come out with it. If this is the method that you're going with, I highly, highly recommend having replacements on hand in case they need to be swapped out. Not only that, but you do have to have additional tools to finish the job by having a seal driver to put the seal back in place and closing everything up on this end. In my case, I don't have to go any further with this external piece. I can just put all the innards back into it. I don't have to replace the dust seals or the seal underneath. They look perfectly fine to me, so I'm gonna maintain those. So with reinstall being the reverse of removal, we're gonna take our brand new spring and put it inside the fork, then the dampening rod assembly. But before we close everything up, I wanna check preload. So let me show you exactly how to do that. So we're taking a pause with the installation here to do the first step in determining our preload, and we have to take a measurement. All we've done so far is just put the spring and the dampening rod assembly into the fork. Nothing has been put down there, no bolts attached, nothing. That's just sitting in there unsprung, no weight on the spring. And that's our first measurement. Basically, we need to determine what the distance is, any distance with it unsprung, no preload on it whatsoever. So that when we do install, we can compare that measurement and see exactly what the difference is. And that difference will be our preload. You can take a measurement anywhere. I personally decided to measure from here to here, as you can see in the picture. Now what we're going to do is continue on the reinstallation process, basically putting in the bolt and locking that together at the front there, then putting everything in, tightening it, torquing it to spec. And then we can measure this again and see what the difference is. One thing I want to note when you're reinstalling this to be careful of is the dampening rod. So this is the dampening rod that you're going to have to put in here. And as you can see right there at the end, it does have a flat side. You can also see on the bottom nut right here, there's this little prong for the rebound adjustment. And this also has a flat side right there. So it fits in only one way. If I apply light pressure there, you can see it sticks out, but we want to actually move this around and get it fitted with that flat side. It has another flat side in there that it's going to line up with. There you go. Now it goes in. I didn't put it all the way in because I also want to line this up too. So with the flat side facing away from us, I can line this up as well and join the two together. Now we're going to tighten this up and torque it 51 foot pounds. So now that we have everything down here torqued and done, we can go back up here. We detach this to slide it all the way down. And now we have this measurement. Again, we should expect this to be about five millimeters less than what we measured previously. And wouldn't you know it? It is. That means we have five millimeters of preload with this. Racetech does provide some washers that you put in the assembly with the springs to shim it up, basically add some preload if you need to. But in this case, thankfully, we don't have to do that. That's pretty much all that's left to do. At this point, we just have to close it up. We have to add oil, of course. We need to put oil in here. The recommended capacity is 370 cc's. However, I know that there is gonna be some residual oil even though we let this sit overnight. So I think I'm gonna measure out 360 and put that in there, see how it feels. If I need to add some more later, I can. And voila, just like that, we went ahead and just finished the whole process. Put the forks on, torque everything in the spec, put the wheels back on, and now we're ready to roll, literally, and actually see what kind of impact these new springs have, compare it to what we used to have, the stiffer ones, 
previously, but I think I will leave that for another episode. That way we can get more in depth with it, more into the weeds, and maybe even play around with some of the clickers, really get that suspension dialed in. So until then. <music>